Hi, this is Earth Science teacher Tim Martin, and in this astronomy video, I want to give you an introduction to the terrestrial planets. Terrestrial means Earth-like. These are the four planets that are also closest to the Sun. Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. In this image, we can see all four planets scaled to appropriate size. From here, we can see Earth is definitely the largest, and Mercury is by far the smallest. Let's take a look at each, and we'll start with our home planet Earth. Here's an absolutely gorgeous photograph of Earth taken from a satellite. A few of the details of Earth? We orbit the Sun at a distance of approximately 150 million kilometers. Since this number is so large, we come up with another way of measuring astronomical distance. We're going to say that Earth is one astronomical unit from the Sun. One astronomical unit is defined by the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. It takes one year, or 365 and a quarter days, for Earth to take a trip around the Sun. Our rotation? Well, technically our rotation is 23 hours and 56 minutes, but one day will serve for now. The diameter of planet Earth? It's a little wider at the equator than it is from pole to pole, but the equatorial diameter of the Earth is 12,756 kilometers. Again, for the purpose of this video, we're going to call that 1. That way we can compare other planets to the size of planet Earth. The Earth has a mass of 5.9 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, but for purposes of this discussion, we're going to call our mass 1. The size and mass give Earth a density of 4.4 grams per cubic centimeter. It's also worth noting that Earth has a significant atmosphere. The atmosphere is made up of 70% nitrogen, about 20% oxygen, a little bit of argon, and a few other trace gases. The average temperature of the atmosphere is 15 degrees Celsius. That's 59 Fahrenheit. But we have extremes. Many places, temperatures can rise to well over 100 Fahrenheit or get down to negative 100 Fahrenheit. Here's planet Mercury viewed from the telescope at the Klein Observatory. It's often difficult to see Mercury in a telescope because Mercury is never far from the Sun. We have sent spacecrafts out to visit Mercury. Here's a map that was created by NASA's MESSENGER space probe that orbited Mercury. A few of the details about Mercury? It orbits the Sun at 0.4 astronomical units. It takes 0.24 years, or 88 days, to make one trip around the Sun. It rotates once every 59 days. There are three rotations for every two orbits of the Sun. Mercury's diameter is 40% that of the Earth, and its mass is only 5% of Earth's mass, giving it a density of 5.5 grams per cubic centimeter. Mercury has no significant atmosphere, which means it has dramatic changes in surface temperature. It may be as hot as 800 Fahrenheit in the day and get down to negative 290 at night giving an average of around 330 degrees Fahrenheit. On to Venus. Venus often appears as one of the brightest objects in the sky, visible in the west right after sunset or in the east right before sunrise. Viewed through a telescope, Venus changes dramatically. Sometimes we see a gibbous, and sometimes we see a crescent, and the crescent is much larger. The changing shape and size of Venus was one of the most convincing pieces of evidence for the heliocentric model of the solar system. There's no way you can explain the changing shape and size if Venus goes around the Earth. We have visited Venus with a spacecraft. Here's an image taken by the NASA Mariner spacecraft. Venus orbits the Sun at a distance of 0.7 astronomical units. Its orbital period is 0.62 years or 224 days. With a rotation period of negative 243 days, its backwards rotation is longer than its orbital period. Due to this extremely slow rotation, Venus is the most spherical of all the planets. Venus has a diameter that's 95% that of the Earth and a mass of 80% of the Earth, giving it a density of 4.4. You can easily see why Venus is often referred to as Earth's twin. Possibly because of active volcanoes, Venus has a thick atmosphere that's rich in carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide. The atmosphere is so thick, its atmospheric pressure is 90 times greater than that of planet Earth. There's the possibility of occasional rain, but don't get too excited. The rain on Venus is likely to be made of sulfuric acid. There's also the possibility of metallic snow on some of the mountain peaks on Venus. Because of the rich carbon dioxide atmosphere, the greenhouse effect has gone unchecked for a billion years, giving Venus temperatures around 460 Celsius, or 870 Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to almost glow red hot. Additionally, because of the thick atmosphere, it never cools off at night. Most of the surface features on Venus are hidden due to the thick clouds. The Magellan spacecraft 
carrying radar mapping equipment, was able to peer through the clouds and reveal many surface features. On to the last of the terrestrial planets, Mars. Here's a view of Mars taken with telescopes at the Klein Observatory. Again, through the Hubble telescope, we can see far more detail. Right away, we may recognize the polar ice cap and the strong orange-red color. The orange-red color is due to the large quantities of iron oxide, or rust, in the soils. Mars orbits at a distance of 1.5 times the Earth. It has an orbital period of 1.88 years. That's 687 days. Its rotation is very similar to that of the Earth, at 24 hours, 37 minutes. It's a good bit smaller, at 50% of the Earth's diameter, and its mass is only 10% that of the Earth, giving Mars a density of 3.8 grams per cubic centimeter. Partially because there's no magnetic field, Mars has a very thin atmosphere, only 1% that of Earth. The atmosphere is composed largely of carbon dioxide with small amounts of nitrogen. Mars has significant temperature extremes as well, with an average of negative 60 degrees Celsius, that's minus 81 Fahrenheit, Wintertime temperatures at the poles may drop as low as negative 195. On the other hand, summertime in the tropics can rise to a quite pleasant 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's take a look at the internal structure of the four terrestrial planets. Starting with Mercury, you may notice that Mercury's core is much larger in comparison to the size of the rest of the planet. This larger metallic core is responsible for Mercury's much greater density. Comparing Venus and Earth, you'll notice right away that Earth has the liquid metal outer core. This gives rise to Earth's protective magnetic field. We also know a bit more about the internal structure of the Earth, and some of those layers give rise to our active plate tectonics. Because the other planets don't show active tectonics, we believe that the mantle in those planets is rigid rock. Let's take a look at some of the surface features on the four terrestrial planets. Here's a map of Mercury, of Venus, Earth, and Mars. In all of these maps, red represents high elevation and blue represents lower elevation. It may be worth taking time to pause and look at each of those maps in detail. Of course, we see familiar continent shapes on planet Earth, but I can also imagine continents on the map of Venus. Mercury and Mars both seem to be dominated by impact craters. Let's take a look at some more similarities and differences between these four planets. One feature they all have in common is impact craters. In fact, almost every solid object in the solar system has evidence of impact craters. We also know that each of these four planets has evidence of volcanism. The upper left shows volcanic deposits on the planet Mercury, the upper right is a radar image of one of the tall volcanoes on the planet Venus. Lower left is a volcano I photographed in the Galapagos Islands. Then in the lower right is Olympus Mons, the largest volcano in the solar system, more than two and a half times taller than Mount Everest. Olympus Mons is an enormous volcano. Speaking of volcanoes, they have similar volcanic features. Calderas often form when a magma chamber collapses. Here we can see evidence of calderas on Mercury, Venus, Earth, yes, that's from Kilauea volcano in Hawaii, and on Mars. Of course, if all four of these planets have volcanoes, it comes as no surprise that they all have lava flows. Here we can see lava flows on Mercury and Venus. The one in the lower left is from SP Crater in northern Arizona, and the one in the lower right, a volcanic lava flow on Mars. Another common feature on the terrestrial planets is the rocky surface. We've never landed on Mercury, but I imagine we'd find similar rocky features if we ever send a spacecraft to land there. The upper images are those taken by the Venera spacecraft, sent by the Soviet Union back in the 1970s. The picture on the lower right is a Viking image from Mars. The picture on the lower left is one that I took on our home planet. Speaking of rocky surfaces, it's interesting to compare some of these planets. One of these images I took, the other was taken by a robot on the planet Mars. Can you guess which is which? Well, maybe if I add color to the picture. Yes, the picture on the right was taken on Mars. The picture on the left was taken in a location known as Mars Hill in Death Valley National Park. Most of the detailed exploration of rocks has come on both Earth and Mars. 
I was struck at how similar some of these sedimentary rock layers are on Mars with some of the sedimentary sandstones in the American Southwest. We also know that several of these planets have sand dune deserts. One of these photographs is taken from Earth orbit, the other taken from Mars orbit. The image on the right is part of the Namib Desert in southern Africa. At least two of the planets have dramatic canyons. On the left, we can see Grand Canyon in Arizona. On the right, Valles Marineris on Mars. Valles Marineris is more than 10 times wider and 10 times longer than Grand Canyon in Arizona. We also have evidence of water erosion. The picture on the left is a satellite image of a drainage system in California. The picture on the right is a drainage system from Mars. Let's talk about planet atmospheres. Mercury has no significant atmosphere due to its proximity to the Sun. Venus, on the other hand, has a very thick carbon dioxide rich atmosphere. The atmospheric pressure at the surface of Venus is 90 times greater than that of Earth. The Earth has an atmosphere that's a pleasant mix of nitrogen, oxygen, argon, and a few other trace chemicals. Mars has an atmosphere that's mostly carbon dioxide with a small amount of nitrogen. Mars's atmosphere is much thinner, with a surface pressure only 1% that of Earth's. Because of the atmosphere, we know that storms can form. Cyclonic storms, or rotating storms, are common on all three planets that have atmospheres. There's a large cyclone at the pole of Venus. Here's a dramatic picture of Hurricane Aaron as it approached the east coast of the United States. And the lower right is a cyclone on Mars. We have documented evidence of dust storms on at least two of these three planets, but it is possible that there may be dust storms also on Venus. The picture on the left is a dramatic image of a dust storm that was photographed from the International Space Station. The pictures on the right, taken by a Hubble telescope in 2001, show a global dust storm that completely enveloped planet Mars. Another unique feature of the terrestrial planets are the polar ice caps. Here we can see Greenland in the north and Antarctica in the south. Mars also has polar ice caps. The ice on Mars is a combination of solid carbon dioxide and frozen water ice. I'm particularly interested in the spiral structure at Mars' North Pole. It's also worth noting that recently we have discovered ice on the planet Mercury. In spite of the fact that Mercury is very close to the Sun, there are craters at the North and South Pole that are so deep they never get bathed in sunlight. In these deep craters at the poles, we found evidence of water ice. So, with the understanding of erosion and the evidence for water ice, we ask, is there any other place that has liquid water? So far, Earth is the only one of the terrestrial planets where we know for sure there's evidence of liquid water. We do have some tantalizing images that hint at the possibility of active liquid water on Mars. Could this new deposit be evidence of ice? Or is it simply a rock avalanche on the side of the crater? RSL features, or reoccurring slope lineae, are another interesting hint at the possibility of water on Mars. Some scientists propose that these dark streaks may indicate the possibility of salty waters flowing underneath the sand. Other scientists propose that these are simply darker grains of sand sliding down the slope of the crater. As for now, this question remains unanswered. We'll continue the search for water because we think water is important for finding evidence of life. Speaking of looking for evidence of life, many people thought that question was answered once this picture was taken in 1976 by this Pioneer spacecraft in orbit of Mars. Some of those folks were disappointed in 2001 when the Mars Global Surveyor re-photographed the site with a higher resolution camera and at a different sun angle. We can see now that this was simply a mountain structure with unique shadows. But don't be too disappointed. I'm happy to report there truly is a face on Mars, and that's the Smiley Face Crater. Finally, a brief comment about the moons. It's worth noting that Mercury and Venus have no moons, and Mars has two, Phobos and Deimos. Phobos is approximately 25 kilometers across, and Deimos merely 15 kilometers across. Both of these are likely asteroids that just passed too close to Mars and consequently fell into orbit. Don't feel left out that Mars has two moons, because in comparison, Earth's moon is so much larger. Earth's moon is by far the dominant satellite of any of the terrestrial planets. 
Thanks for watching, and I hope you join me again on another astronomy or earth science video.